the community, right? You know the saying, um, let me make sure I get it right, because I, I, I keep getting it wrong. Uh, know the devil that's near you, you keep him close, right? That's what they did. He was a part of the community. They knew what to expect from him. And they, they, they didn't fear him. Then Jesus came. And what did he do? In an instant, this demonic man became a disciple. In an instant. He became whole. He was healed. And the people, they had trouble with that. Why? The other thing could be Jesus wiped out their whole financial stability with the pigs. Right? They were herders of the pigs. The interesting thing is that the pigs were being raised by a Jewish community who did not eat pork. Right? They didn't eat anything that was unclean. So why did they have the pigs? Say it again. <laughs> because the, they had the pigs for the Romans. The Roman soldiers provided money for the pigs. And in some way, when, you, when I read it, in some ways it was a way of like buying protection. You know, kind of like the mafia. In today's standard, or the 80s or 70s standard, right? And so Jesus came and he shook up what was going on by casting out these demons and drowning them in, in the pigs. They became upset and fearful Because what they had, what they felt was their protection, one, was gone. The pigs were gone. Oh, my goodness, what are we going to do with the Romans who are going to come and we don't have any pigs for them? Jesus, why did you do that? When you think about it, from the time that Jesus was born, what was the thought? Jesus was going to come on a white horse, and he was going to eliminate the Roman soldiers and make them free. Right? And what did Jesus do here? He came, he eliminated the pigs, the demons, which set the people free from the bondage that they were being held from the Romans with these pigs. But they couldn't see the freedom. They became fearful trying to figure out how can we, we fix this? Why? Because when Jesus freed them, he gave them another responsibility. When you read this, he gave them the, res the responsibility of accepting who he was, accepting the salvation that he freely gives to everybody. So rather than accept who Jesus was, they wanted to go back. Just like the, when the Israelites were walking across, they wanted to go back to Egypt, right? In one hand, they accepted. The other hand, they couldn't. 
But what that does, when you accept Jesus Christ as Savior, you're saying that I'm going to change my ways and my, I'm going to live a certain way because now I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. But because they refused to do that, they became afraid because they, in some ways, didn't know what to do. That, that system that was in place, Jesus broke it down, didn't he? Everything became new in the instant. This man that was walking around naked and terrorizing everybody is now sitting at Jesus' feet, fully clothed, as a matter of fact, listening to Jesus, accepting the word that Jesus was giving them. He accepted they reject it. You feel that tension there? I feel it. If you don't feel it, I feel it for you. I feel it. Right? So what do you do? What do you do when you're called out of your comfort zone to do something and believe something that's right there in front of your face, and you refuse to do it. The fear set in. Let, let, me, let me give a different analogy. For those of us that are still working, and for those of you that are retired, I am a little jealous. I'm trying to get there. But for those of you that are retired, think back with me. When you did work, right, and you had a certain assignment, and say so you work computers, and the boss came in one day and said, we're going to do an audit to make sure that you're doing your work and to make sure that you're doing your work effectively, that you're using your time at work for work purposes only, that you're not shopping on HSN, QVC, that you're not playing solitaire or one of the, whatever other game that may be out on your computer instead of doing your work. What happens? If you're not doing what you're supposed to do all the time because you take little breaks, you become fearful. Oh my goodness. I didn't delete my history. They could still find it anyway. But I didn't delete my history. Where, what site was I on last? Was I on Nordstrom? J.C. Penney? Was I shopping at Wegmans to have Instacart delivered to my house when I get home? Right? To us, it may be simple stuff, but to the job, they're saying, well, you're still in time. And the fear is, if they find out, am I going to still have a job? These people, at that time, Jesus is performing miracles right there in front of them, showing them. And the, 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 the demons themselves said, Jesus, what do you want from us, most high God? They knew who Jesus was, but the people that were there could not accept Jesus. Because they had their traditions. They were used to doing things a certain way. They didn't want to have to do something different. Come out of their comfort zone and acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. They have fear. How do we move on from this? Jesus, he ruined, he took our money away. He took our protection away. And instead of saying, we're going to believe in Jesus, the most high God, and put our trust in him to help us get out of this, Jesus, you got to go. 
You causing trouble here, Jesus. You have to go. Right? Jesus is calling us today to come out of our comfort zone, to launch out into the deep. I'm not talking about ankle deep, right, where you can still kind of slosh around in the water and things are good when you're on the beach. I'm talking about that water that comes up to your waist where you become a little unstable, right? And then it rises up a little bit more and you go, oh my goodness, if it comes up any more, I'm going to drown because you're trying to figure it out yourself. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. Come, come to me. Lean into me. Call on me so I can help you get out of this mess that you're in. So I can help you change your perspective on what you see. So you're no longer stuck in the rut of thinking it's you, but realize that it's, it's me. It's all about me wanting to help you become the best that you can be. So that everything that I put into you, you can take and put into somebody else. They missed all of that. You know, and I, I got it because I, I kept reading it. Right? We read and we study. Jesus is a gentleman. They said, Jesus, you got to go. And what did he do? He left. He left. He left them to figure out in their own devices how they were going to move forward, not realizing that they were free, that he had freed them from the chains of, of the system that was trying to hold them down. They, they couldn't see it. They couldn't see past themselves because what did they say? Well, Jesus, we, we've always done it that way. So why would we change? That would require us to, to do something different. And Jesus is saying, that's it. Yes, something different. And guess what? You'll be okay if you do something different. Why? Because you're depending on me, Jesus is saying to them. And they missed it. They didn't want to. Because when we say, I love Jesus, I believe in Jesus Christ, then we become accountable for our actions. We become accountable for those things that we say, that we do, that hurt other people's feelings, that... Um, continue to keep people marginalized. Well, who wants to do that? I don't want to be accountable for nobody else, let alone myself. And Jesus is trying to, to, to get them to understand. It's not about you. Why do you want to keep going in this circle? You're free. Walk in the freedom that I've given you. They got real quiet on me. Y'all did this to me last week. They got real quiet. Jesus is speaking to us today to not be afraid. To tear down those walls that, that have been built up. Whatever those walls are, for each of us is something different. And he's trying to get us to tear them down and depend on him and to become united together in his love because it's only through his love that we're able to receive the compassion, the grace, the mercy, and in turn, give it to somebody else, right? Isn't that the only way I could give it to you, Mary Jane? Right? We, again, we have to be willing participants, though. 
not standing there waiting to see what the other person's going to do. You know, if Mike goes ahead, if he does it, then I'll do it. Let me see what Mike's going to do. No, Jesus is saying, trust me and move. Enjoy the freedom that I've given you. The whole free will thing that we have. How do we use it? Do we use it for self-satisfaction? Or do we use it to glorify God and help other people? That's all I got for you today. I'm keeping it short. I'm going to keep it short. Because the message that we're to get today is don't be afraid Trust in Christ. Do something different. Do something new. Be radical. Jesus was not your ordinary person walking around during this time period worrying about what people said about him. What did he do? He continued to preach the word, help people, Heal people, right? Transforming lives as he moved from city to city to city. All we have to do is spread the word and watch God transform them as we move from neighborhood to neighborhood or from Tops to Wegmans, Nordstrom, or wherever you shop. Share a little Jesus, even if it's just a, a, a smile, and accept the fact that you are required to do something. It is not a spectator sport to accept Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay, just checking. Listen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm done for real. Let's, let, let us stand so we can pray together.